exercises associated with this topic. And I still think probably you guys would get out of here a little bit early today. I'll, I'll stay and keep talking if you want. Did, did you get your guitar? Well, it's in my hotel room. Uh, I don't have it in there. <clears throat> there are uh, in the standard in 50,001 it talks about accurate and repeatable these concepts are a small part of the body of knowledge that a CP is supposed to know so we cover it here it's kind of like net present value and life cycle costing these are concepts you know I think of the CP is really like the merger of a master's in engineering and a master's in business because it's really where the interface meets, right? It's the business sense behind the energy. So it is important to understand these. Uh, it's never been important for me in terms of an implementation that, that I had to really appreciate this distinction. But to pass the exam and get the certification, I certainly had to appreciate and know what this means. So accuracy is just how close to the actual value can the meter get. So in this case, this is our actual reading. Our accuracy is how far off the mark is that reading. <coughs> the pressure gauge of 0 to 50, 2% 2 accuracy, the maximum error would be Know, plus or minus one percent. I mean, one psig for a compressed air system that would be great. For some kind of precise uh, pneumatic control, or uh, uh, maybe some kind of really sensitive hydraulic system that might be very great. Precision is really a uh, uh, indication of repeatability. So precision really is, if I do that reading eight times, how close are those readings together? You know, if, if I read it one time and I'm over here, and I read it another time and I'm over here, and then I'm over here and I'm over here, it's not very precise. If I read it eight times and now I'll congeal around the same reading, it may not be accurate, but it could be very precise. And resolution really has to do with how, uh, the, how discreet I can make that measurement. And we'll look at that in a little more detail. I can read here is plus or minus what? It's actually plus or minus a half a centimeter. Oh. This is how accurate is that? I can read from then. Plus or minus 0.5. Thank you. 
first question. Is that accurate? You ever throw in those darts? No. 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 <clears throat> Are they precise? Yes. Yeah. Pretty right on. They do whatever they're doing wrong. They're doing it wrong every time. <laughs> This is an interesting one. And it's an interesting concept for us as CPs, which I'll explain. I mean, if you think about it, maybe we should have put some of these way out here, and that would have been easy to answer that question right here. What's your real, your first response to that is, well, how good, how accurate does it need to be? Right? If it's in the red, then this is not very accurate. But just being close to the center might be good enough, right? So it's kind of like that with energy sometimes. Some things we need to read very precisely. Some things doesn't need to be that good. Is it precise? High one time, low the next, bright one time, to the left the next. I'm not very precise. Well, it's not right in the middle of the red right now. But no, it's, in it's the not right in the middle. Again, same kind of thing you could say about accurate, but generally, if you were comparing these three, this is accurate, this is not. Yeah. Both of these are precise. This is not precise. But we would consider that. So are we going to have some similar problems on the right hand? Uh, well, it, it might give you some kind of scenario. I can't remember. It's been too long since I've taken it. But it might give you some kind of scenario where you, you know, the PVs or the CPs have to analyze some energy data, which they claim. <coughs> this level of accuracy for, but it, then they give you some details about the instrument that it came from, and you recognize there's a disconnect with the accuracy that that meter can provide versus what they're telling you. But it would be fairly obvious. I don't remember having to uh, start from scratch in this. If you, read, if you read the problem carefully enough in all dimensions, everything you needed was you know, was in the problem to solve it. Same way with converting units and that kind of stuff. They typically uh, gave you enough if you weren't really scratching your head. I have no idea how you could start yeah, it. I remember also the accuracy and the part of the earth, they have some very complex uniformers, very high conditions that I'm not sure to write it. There are some good resources in the e-guide. You're probably familiar with the layout of our modules by now. We get close to the end. We're pointing you back here. I told you on the first day, I think, if I didn't, I should have, that the e-guide is the toolbox for the CP. It will help you help anybody implement the standard because some of these pieces that we talked about in the last three days are fairly easy and straightforward to do. Identifying energy sources. How hard is that to do? Well, there's a worksheet in the e-guide to help you do that if you need, if that can support you. But the other things that we've talked about, you're going, I don't know what to do with an air compressor, or that just is foreign to me. I have no idea how to get started on that. Even for you, just go read the detail on the e-guide about that topic. Look at how to do it. Look at the resources that are out there, and it'll help put a little footing under your feet, but it also then you can, you know, if you're working with an organization trying to implement it and they're struggling with pieces, it's been the hardest thing probably to get the folks in Mexico engaged with. They're just not used to coming to the U.S. or a resource like this. Of course, it's not in their language. Either. And, uh, you know, they, they could really get uh, the full depth of what the standard is trying to implement within the organization. More than we can talk about, you know, in 30 minutes in, a, in this city. So use it. Here's your role. <clears throat> Literally, as I told you, I start with the energy review. 
what did what came out of the energy review we identified these sources where do we get these energy sources where do we get the data for these sources that becomes an item for my measurement plan what are my ENPIs are any of the inputs to the ENPIs not on my measurement plan already okay I got to include production where does that come from it comes from the planning department monthly report or come from the accounting department you know and I just go through uh, the energy review and the other inputs that we've done to the planning process identify those things that that we need to we either want to look at to understand performance or evaluate how well we're doing uh, they go on my measurement plan do any of these indicate the need to define what a significant deviation would be we define that and then you know finish by making sure that we know how to maintain the accuracy and repeatability of those readings it's pretty straightforward but this can take any form that helps the organization deal with it Typically, that it's something they haven't thought about too much in relation to energy. <coughs> it's maybe another way of saying what the success factors are. These were certainly some limitations that came from our experience up to this point. interesting one uh, you know lack of instrumentation uh, or lack of calibration that's not uncommon people will put in meters and they've never had them calibrated because why do we need to calibrate the compressed air meter it's not really helping me improve my product quality or anything like that. They have no idea what they have, right? so they had it handed in they don't know that it's still reliable Not defining clearly how to identify a significant deviation when that might happen. The follow up on that, who's going to do the investigation and how to do it. So, as I said, um, I think this is one of the things it probably wouldn't make the top 10 list if David Letterman was teaching energy management. <laughs> But I think if you really uh, got down inside an organization that was SCP certified, you would find out that this added value to their process because um, it's kind of like the, the list of uh, vital signs that they're maintaining to know how well they're doing, both in terms of effectiveness and in relation to their energy performance. By following the key characteristics. So, um, my recommendation on any piece of the management system, and in particular this one, is uh, they need to cover the shalls, the requirements that the uh, normative references make for these items, but it doesn't need to be more complicated than what a simple approach would be. So make it work for the organization, make it maintainable, make it sustainable. Uh, yeah, you can cover all the requirements with this convoluted contraption of uh, documents, processes, work procedures, and that kind of stuff, where you could just have a simple and effective way. In the end, this is what you want. You want an effective management system. An effective management system is one that doesn't create extra work for people that adds value to what they do and helps them improve their energy performance. <coughs> so we're going to have you work on this. Hopefully it won't be um, quite as generic or foreign as that compressed air one we did for operational control because you can appreciate a spray dryer you know we're burning gas to make heat we're 
It's not much different than drying the clothes in your house. We just got to evaporate the water out of this kale. So we want you to only consider the gas energy source with the spray dryer. So don't worry about the motors and drives. There is an electric component to that. But there's a worksheet. Um, I can print these out if you think you want paper, but they're in that, they should be in that exercise handout that you've got electronically. Think, look through that worksheet, specify what will be required to ensure that the appropriate data is collected for monitoring the energy performance. So we're just thinking about, you remember one of the exercises I think yesterday we did was we gave you some data on spray dryer production and energy and you did that um, intensity for each of the three spray dryers, you had the graph of for each one. So think about that ENPI, how are we going to ensure that that is accurately and reliably reported each month? What will we rely on for the, all that data? And fill out the worksheet for it. So I don't, I wasn't here when the teams got assigned. Just keep the same teams that Dan gave you this morning, whatever that was. There's another exercise after this one where we're going to kind of take step two. So you're going to take what you do in this one and go a little bit further. But we'll debrief this. And, uh, well, I don't know. We might do both exercises and then do one big debrief. Let me read it first.